G'day everyone, I'm Smokescreen and welcome back to another video and here we go with the next round of the Toyota Gazoo Racing GT Cup for 2021. So here we go with the next round. So if you remember the previous round, it was an absolute shocker about one of the worst performances I think I've ever done. So I'm looking to sort of improve here and this is a very difficult combination to try and do such. We're driving the Toyota 2000 GT, so a little sports car from 1967. Um, basically, no downforce, no brakes. Um, yeah, look, a lot of nothing going on here. But we're at Nürburgring 24 hour, and um, basically this is the, one of the most deadly combinations I've ever, ever sort of done. It was one of the hardest things I've ever done to date on this game. But here we go, we go for qualifying and, oh yeah, you, you know we go through the entire, the entire 25 kilometer lap of Nürburgring 24 hour circuit here as the out lap, instead of doing a cut through on the GP circuit, which I ever so wish we could do. But here we go, we're coming through the out lap now and I'm basically just going to show you a couple of hot spots for action or some really difficult sections. So we had the... Uh, uh, Arenberg section, and we've got the Adenauer Force Chicane, and then uh, the Siphon. So the three, there's three main hot spots of the of the track for easy mistakes, and you can see I'm struggling even the on the outlap, which I'm not even participating in. Um, but for the outlap, we're just preparing for qualifying. So I let Amazing Hour through. He's about 10 seconds a lap quicker than me, so there was n um, no reason to hold him up. Um, I'll let Aussie Hypnotic through and we'll see how that works out for me. But we're going to go for our qualifying lap now, but we see the outlap there. 11 minutes, so it was a really painful outlap here. But thankfully we could actually push quite hard because the multipliers are very low, so we didn't exactly have to um, go very careful on the outlap like we did in the Group 3 race last week. But here we go, um, through the Yokohama S, so of course we do skip all of Mercedes Arena, thankfully, it would be absolute torture in this car, but I guess compared to the rest of the circuit, it's <laughs> it's quite insignificant. But here we go, I'm going to do a similar thing to, to what I did in the um, Group 3 Nürburgring race from last week, I'm just going to fast forward through the straightforward bits and just show you sort of the more difficult sections of the circuit and how I managed to navigate them on qualifying, but you can see... We're already catching up to the back of Aussie Hypnotic, so it's a bit of an issue now. Especially coming onto the Nordschleife loop. Um, we don't want to get stuck behind people. You can see we're definitely catching up to Aussie Hypnotic, as you can see the... As you can see the headlights very lethargically popping up, as they would in this 1967 spec machine. Just to try and communicate to Aussie Hypnotic, like, uh, yeah, you're, you're holding me up a bit, bro. But here we go, as we head over the dip into the Arenberg section, you can see we actually make a bit of a hash of it, as the car completely loses all of its grip going over the, uh, going over the rise. It's kind of to be expected. And we end up four wheels on the grass in the braking zone for Arenberg. We managed to just about recover as Aussie Hypnotic slides very deep into the corner, and he gets a poor exit. We actually managed to get that overtake done with... Uh, I guess you could say minimal time loss. I don't imagine I lost too much time from running very wide there. I probably would have lost maybe half a second, but then we lose a little bit of more more time coming into the Adenauer Force chicane as we just run very wide, heading over that dip, uh, over the dip, that doesn't really make sense, up over the crest, um, up over the crest into the braking zone there. But you can see Aussie Hypnotic firmly behind me, and I think there was another car behind him, but here we go. We're just going to fast forward through all this bit. It's all pretty difficult, but you could just about get it right with a bit of practice. But this this corner I actually messed up. You can see I broke too late and almost ended up on the outside grass, and that would have been pretty deadly for the qualifying. But here we go into the Versiphon section now. You see, just very gentle on the brakes. The car wants to oversteer, heading down the hill in that corner in the braking zone there. But we get through there okay. So, Versiphon successfully navigated. And you can see we've actually extended a little bit of a gap to Aussie Hypnotic. And even more of a gap as we head through that section there. I'm going to fast forward through all of this straight. And then we're going to come up to uh, this very quick left-hander in the straight. But we get through there okay. So, I'm going to fast forward all the way through to the carousel, which we almost fall out the top of. Uh, but it's not to worry when it should just about stay into the banking a little bit squirrely overall so not the best not the best carousel there but then we're heading up through this uphill left-hander 
into the right. Car just wants to slide everywhere as we get oversteer heading through there and then through this corner. I felt like I was okay and just going down into second gear. Could probably hang in third, but we've definitely extended the gap to the cars behind now. And I think do I, I must stay at real time speed as we head down through all of this section just two wheels on the curb just nice and gentle the car reacts okay to the curbs especially through that section so it's not too bad this corner i felt like i was pretty good at i could help i could hold quite a high speed here and this downhill left hand almost sort of a double apex the car really wants to wander wide even if you brake really early then we head through this corner now you don't want to get over that white line you'll get a penalty and then youtube corner once again we don't want to end up as part of a uh, nurburgring crash compilation we just managed to get through there nicely and then up into ice curve now very understeery uphill off camber left hander and then up over the crest on the exit the track dips away to the left on the exit there and we end up two wheels on the grass but it's not to worry as we head down through these very shallow s's into the dip now and we just get onto the brakes just as we go down the dip and the car just grips up nicely heading through here and then it's flat out from this point on for a little while on we're just going to fast forward up until this very quick left hander up a hill and just one wheel up onto the curb there and then as we head into the Schwalbenschwanz corner here just before the Kleins carousel we get that done okay you probably keep third gear there but then down into second for the Kleins carousel just keep it on the inside and you can basically get to full throttle before the apex so not to worry there we've completely lost Hozzy Hypnotic behind so it was fairly detrimental that we managed to get stuck behind him at the start of the lap but I think we've managed to recover okay we get the Galgen Kopf corner quite nice a little bit of a feather of the throttle halfway through so we don't end up two wheels on the grass on the exit and then just shifting up into fourth right at the end of the rev range then heading down the dotting ahoa into the tear garden section look at how on edge you are here lifting off now feathering into the brake very very carefully onto the brakes and then just feathering all the way through here because you're moving around you're going through all these series of corners in the braking zone it's basically you're just asking for the car to spear off into the barrier but we come across the line with a 1045 point something that i missed 1045.9 or something and you can see look amazing how it was 10 seconds faster so that was actually an okay qualifying time you can see it put us fifth it was only about i think it was just under two seconds off my time trial record which by no means was as fast as I could possibly go I, there's definitely time always when you're sitting 10 seconds off the lead but here we go we're just going to start the race now and this this race my goodness just it's such a slow burner because of the way the cars are because of how sort of lethargic these cars feel around the circuit but I can tell you you want to watch to the end you really want to watch to the end and the main rival we're going to be sort of focusing on for the majority of this race is the guy behind SR Brian so we actually have raced him before not directly but we have been in a on-track battle with him before so if you remember all the way back months and months and months ago it'd be about a year ago now do you remember the Pagani Zonda R race around the Nürburgring GP circuit where I qualified in second SR Brian was first I managed to hang with him for the first half of the race and then he drove off into the distance yeah it's the same guy so Let's see how this race develops. We fast forward all through the opening sector. If you uh, were just paying attention, you can see how careful everyone was breaking into turn one. So we get through the GP section okay, and we're heading onto the Nordschleife loop for the first time. So the strategy for this race is there is no strategy. The strategy is to survive, and the sort of lesser known second strategy was skip the round, but uh, I wasn't as I wasn't as smart as to skip that. So. Uh, it's a no stop and we're going to see heading over here if we manage to get onto this straight section okay we're going to be catching or trying to stay behind john Titor ahead and you can see we get through there okay and then we're going to have a look at how we actually do the uh, the arenberg sort of braking correctly get onto the brakes and just keep as far inside as possible and then gently onto the brakes before the end of the curb on the left we go slightly deep but as does john ahead so it's all right but that's how you kind of successfully do it. we have a massive moment on the curb my goodness that was that was bloody close uh, but we managed to just about keep control of the car and then heading up into the adenauer force chicane as we head over the rise on the left hander boom yellow flags out which means someone's binded up ahead and much to my surprise it's amazing hour it is probably arguably 
the quickest driver in the region at the moment has made a mistake. So it's really a testament uh, to see how difficult these cars are to control. And then to top it off, Noodles has a penalty up ahead, so there could potentially be a, uh, a place to be gained by the time we get to the Dottingahoa. But we skip ahead a little bit. So what happened all through the sort of the first half of this lap is I got a gap to Brian behind and managed to stay just over a second ahead, which is good. I don't want to be giving him any slipstream effects, so even though these cars don't have the amount of aero that sort of GT cars have, um, the slipstream still is a factor. You definitely, if you're going to be given the choice of having slipstream and not having slipstream, you are going to choose the slipstream over not having it at all. But as we go through sort of the beginning of this handling section, Brian is just about caught up to me, so he's clawing his way back into the slipstream range. But then as we head deeper into this handling section, I think I begin to sort of demonstrate my hand up until this corner here where I just about get two wheels or four wheels over the white line. Half second track limit penalty. Man, that was that was really painful to, to see because you can see I'm just about eight tenths ahead of Brian as we're halfway through Galgenkopf now. Heading onto the straight, you have a look at that gap. It was 1.1 seconds, so I wasn't going to give him a toe. I was just about going to be able to keep this position, but now I've got this half second penalty, and this is about the only place where not having good brakes is advantageous because you don't lose too much speed. I think I only lost about 12 kilometers an hour uh, by serving that, but you'll see here, as we're heading all the way down the straight, I mean, how long's the straight? 2.1 kilometers long, so it really gives a very long opportunity for the cars behind, who now have the overspeed, to catch up to me and get past. So SR Brian makes his way past, and amazing hour also, so ha after having recovered from um, his little bit of a off-track excursion, he's managed to make his way all the way back through, and he's overtaken two of us at quite a good point in the circuit, just at the end of the straight. But here we go. We're now behind SR Brian, and this is where this race takes a massive turn. So we're on to the second of two laps here. So we're on to the final lap of the race now, but you can see it is still quite a long race as we're heading up towards the line. We're 11 minutes in. So, it, you know, even though it's two laps, it's still quite a long race. So obviously no pit stops to worry about and basically no tire wear to worry about either. So uh, no stopping, of course. So once again, just the objective is to survive. But now we're on to the final lap. I know we can get fifth here, and that is basically what I'm going to try and do. So I know that I... Th well, I don't know, but I think I'm marginally quicker than Brian. He's stronger than me through the opening of that handling section towards the end of the second third of the, Nor of the Nordschleife loop. But I know that I can pull the gap again by the time we get to the straight. And that is the most crucial point to get to... Uh, that is the most crucial point to break the slipstream because you don't want to give them a toe down the two kilometre straight. It just invites them to get the move done by the end of the lap which on this lap will be the end of the race. But here we go, as we're heading all the way through the uh, GP section now. We're just going to be focusing on where we can potentially get Brian uh, for this position now, and it would be pretty good if I could manage to get past just before we get to the Nordschleife. Um, so you can see we're really close, right behind him, but I just feathered the throttle through the Michael Schumacher S, and he's just about able to keep the advantage ahead of me, and uh, it's going to be very difficult to get the move done now. So we're going to be looking at the time gap, so even though the physical distance between myself and Brian is not that big, the time gap is about four tenths, so really the cars are so slow that even though I look like I'm only about 20 metres off the back of him, I'm about half a second worth, but here we go, down the back straight, uh, and we're heading in towards the uh, chicane, we're using the much wider NGK chicane variant, um, my, uh, opposed to the much sharper VDOL chicane which you use in the GP circuit. But here we go through here, just keeping the car nice and balanced. We get a nice minimum apex speed of about 120 kilometers an hour, and then we make a lot of uh, ground into this uh, long uphill off camber left hander in the uh, transition from the GP circuit to the Nordschleife. But here we go. We're just going to be focusing on where Brian is weak, and we're going to just try and basically take as much of advantage of where I'm strong as possible. Now, I actually leave this entire lap in unedited, so we'll see if I once again don't run out of things to talk about, but it just gives 
you guys, the viewers, an excellent opportunity to see just how much on a knife edge we are driving these cars around here. You can see Brian two wheels in the dirt on the exit there and it just puts him a little bit off through these S's section but I unfortunately run a little bit wide on one of them and it gets me a poor run throughout the end of it here but as long as we can get a nice exit here we could potentially get close enough to just grab his slipstream down the sort of long straight before Arenberg and here we go four tenths behind it's a pretty good distance in these cars you don't want to be too far off the back because the toe won't be very strong but four tenths is pretty good because we get a nice decent toe but we're not too sort of put off by having a car very close to us but here we go just lifting off the throttle through this long right hander onto the straight it's very paramount that you don't dip any wheels onto the grass throughout that corner because you'll compromise your run through this straight here. Now this car is, you know, I said it before, but it's just, you're on a, such a knife edge. I did about the most amount of practice I think I've ever done for, for one of these rounds recently. I did about five hours worth of practice on the Sunday that this round was happening, and I needed every single one of every single second of those five hours I did so it was about it was maybe four hours worth of just time trialing around the circuit just trying to get the car around as fast as possible and then I did one practice race before this lobby and by the time by the end of the practice race I was just about on the pace enough to be comfortable in this slot here which you can you know quite convincingly see I'm running in sort of the, the top the top six within the top sixth one position off fifth which is very good but here we go you can see we caught right up to the back of Brian in that braking zone for the Adenauer Force chicane and we touched the back of him in much similar fashion as we did in the group three race to the Audi we caught up and thankfully no, I didn't end up punting Brian off like I did with the Audi in that video so uh, once again apologies to the Audi driver but here we go uh, heading up into this section now it's very um you know, a very good way to kind of make a gain against against the opponent in these road cars with a H-pattern gearbox is just selecting the right gear on the exit of the corners. So in in uh, in the road cars, you're often you, you can often run a bit quicker if you're in higher gear throughout these corners. So if you're going through a corner which you might think, oh, you need second for, but on the exit you, that gear change from second to third loses you a lot more time than you actually gain from using second in the corner so if SR Brian is selecting maybe second gear in some of these tighter corners and I'm in third you might think ah oh, yeah you I can avoid that gear change whereas Brian has to do the gear change so I can sort of make the time up on the straight it's a lot that's generally what the what you do but it's a bit harder in these cars because the power is right at the end of the gear range so you might you might see here that I'm really revving to the revving the absolute nuts out of the car every single gear and what I needed to do was work out at which speed the car hit the limiter and then memorize that and change just before I hit that speed so it was about 170 for third gear and then uh, changing from fourth to fifth is about 200 kilometers an hour but SR Brian gets a bit of a moment on the exit of the Bergwerk corner there and it's just going to put him off down that straight so now we're going to cast our eyes up to the time gap which is just over a second although it has dipped below almost below eight tenths so if we can gain just another tenth and a half down this straight we can potentially get into the slipstream but it's very difficult as we're heading up through these corners um, the cars are so unbalanced there's just no downforce so even those tiny corners Corners throughout the straight can differentiate drivers if you don't take it quite as perfectly so these cars really train you to really train you to um, put a lot of focus in the details you can see look at that halting fourth gear by the end of the straight you can still get about 10 kilometers more uh, speed by out of fourth gear before you even change so the car is right high revs you might think you want to change but you definitely don't because you lose the torque but here we go coming into the styles streck double right-hander before the carousel this is the part where I expect Brian to be a little bit stronger and I think that is the case as that gap has opened up to 1.2 seconds so we were running in his slipstream at the start of the lap but he's now extended it to 1.2 but I'm not really too concerned at this point all I have to do is get into the slipstream by the start of the dotting Ahoa and as long as I can do that I'm still in contention for this fifth position so it's extremely important that I can sort of calm it down just calm it down focus on my practice just do what I know 
just hit the apexes, forget about the race through sort of the second half of this handling section. As long as I can do that, I might just be able to get to the back of SR Brian. Um, but we've got one more thing to sort of worry about. Iron Mask behind was two seconds behind me at the start of the lap. He's now just got below one second as we get a little bit of a uh, too much weight transfer. Um, as we're heading up through the Hoa Arct section, but as we're heading down the hill through this uh, Hedvig's hallway, and then we're going to head down into the sharper uh, right hand here of of uh, Vipperman. I'm looking at my track map with all the German names on it, and it's confusing my brain. But here we go, down this downhill left-hander. Brian runs very wide on the exit. This is where I got myself a penalty on the previous lap, but we actually hit that apex this time. Two wheels beyond the white line, so that's much better. And you can see, by the time we head through through YouTube corner, on the exit, SR Brian straddling that curb, boom, we're back into slipstream, seven tenths behind. So exactly what I predicted would happen. SR Brian a lot stronger through the first half of this handling section, and I'm a lot stronger through the second half. But just through that ice curve there, I just get it slightly wrong, and that gap has just opened up to eight tenths again. So by this point, I'm definitely beginning to sort of really think about the time gaps there. Iron Mask has just got into my slipstream too as I'm beginning to uh, really push the limits of the car of, or I guess push my limits uh, against the car here but as we head down this hill it's all flat out now flat out through this right hander and just two wheels on the curb and just don't make too much of a corner out of that uh, two wheels on that curb there and once again don't make too much of a corner out of this we've basically got three or four corners left to go to get back into the slipstream of SR Brian a lot of rotation on that right hander on the entry there Iron Mask has just got out of my slipstream so I can definitely uh, forget about him at this point and then heading up through the Schwalben Schwanz left hander up towards the Kleins carousel and this is about the last opportunity I have to try and get into his slipstream. This is the most important corner of the race right now as we hit into that braking zone, hit the apex, get onto the power, have a look at the time. Oh no, SR Brian is getting away from me, heading through the Galgenkopf. So, oh man, that was basically at this point, that was kind of it. It's gonna be a sixth. The only last thing I can possibly hope for is that he messes up a gear change, so he hits the limiter or shifts too early, or he makes a mistake in the tear gut and braking, which is a very real possibility because it's one of the hardest points on the circuit. So you've got, um, where have you got? Arenberg, Adenauer Force, the Siphon, and the tear garden section are some of the hardest corners on the on the track, and I would say the tear garden is up there in one of the maybe top two most difficult uh, places on the track to get these cars through. But here we go, right onto the limiter, heading into the tear garden section. We're just going to be trying to brake as late as possible onto the brakes, as late as I possibly could bear. SR Brian slightly later, he manages to run deep into the final chicane now and he gets a very poor exit and I get a much better run. I've got the run on him now and I think I switched to Chase Cam to give you guys a better view here. Yes, I do. I've got the run on SR Brian coming up towards the line, a little bit of contact between us and I'm just going to grab that position off him by four hundredths of a second. Oh man, that was bloody fantastic. That is one of the best races I've had in a long time. That was absolutely fantastic. And you can see we've got a formation uh, between myself and SR Brian heading through turn one at the end of the race. Man, I've managed to bring home fifth on the final straight, bringing home 226 points for the fifth position in this round of the Toyota GR GT Cup. Oh my goodness, what a fantastic race. It literally came down to the final straight and it really just goes to show you may be awesome through the entire lap, but if you mess up the last corner, all that can count for nothing. If a person behind is just close enough and you make a mistake, that's it. That position that you fought for the entire lap of the race, in this case, the, the 10 and a half minute lap, can go straight down the toilet. And that's exactly what happened to SR Brian. But, you know, he put up a very good fight and I think I would have probably stayed ahead anyway if I didn't get myself the penalty, but, at the end of the day, what an absolutely fantastic battle, and it's really, I really needed that. It's really, that result has refreshed me because lately I've been suffering a lot from disconnects and it's sort of made me begin to question whether the amount of effort I put in is even worth it. But um, thanks to Matt McEwen who gave me some tips for uh, router settings to try and reduce the disconnects. I actually haven't disconnected since, so I guess I can 
thank him for that and thankfully I got into that race and look what it turned out to be. A 220 plus point result which is about the goals I'm going for in these championship races. I managed to bring it home and I had a fantastic battle with Brian. Not much more I could have asked for and I didn't crash, I didn't crash which was a very real possibility in these cars. But my voice is absolutely shot right now so I'm going to end it here before, the, before my voice box falls out. So do hit the like button if you enjoyed and do subscribe if you'd like to see more videos from me. Do leave a comment as well. Questions, comments and constructive criticism as always. Very much appreciated. But that's going to be the end of this one today and that means that is it from me. So once again, I do thank you very much for watching. See you later.